So if you've been sitting there him and hawing about starting a business, stop. Make the decision that you're starting this business or don't, but just make the decision to do it one way or another. I remember when I was going back and forth over my book, fine, I was driving me and Glenn and everyone around me. So Glenn just said, don't write the book then. And like I realized like I had to make the decision. I was going to write the book no matter what. So if you're him and hawing about this business thing, it's in you for a reason. Make the decision. Take the action. You've gotten great at divine working, but what about divine living? Welcome to the Divine Living Podcast. I'm your host, Gina DeVee. You're not alone in wanting more. And here at the Divine Living Podcast, you can expect to be part of conversations from women like us who unapologetically dream big and are obsessed with manifesting our most fabulous lives. The conversation starts now. Gorgeous. I'm so excited to jump into today's amazing Divine Living Podcast episode with you. But first, I want to invite you to a very special free five-day virtual event that is all about uncovering your next level calling. I know that so many of us are just like swimming around in the circles in our head and just curious about like, what am I doing with my life? What am I meant for? Like bored with stuff that's like been same old, same old. So all this, if you're ready for a super big breakthrough, April 12th through 16th, I'm hosting this free, totally gorgeous, feminine online retreat. Come join us. It's divineliving.com forward slash next level. We'll get you in and get you all the details. Divineliving.com forward slash next level. And I'm just gonna be pouring into you Monday through Friday. I know my own personal journey has been so much about completing endings, end of era, getting ready for the next level and what that is. And so I'm gonna share with you what I've been going through and really support you in getting clear and confident and actually excited about your next level calling. So come join us, divineliving.com forward slash next level. And now enjoy today's episode. Hello, queen. Welcome to today's Divine Living Podcast. As always, it is such a joy to be here, be in your presence, be in your space. I never take it for granted, and it is such an honor to be on this entrepreneurial, faith-based, living our best lives, all things queenhood journey with you. And today, we're going to be talking about overcoming the entrepreneurial roller coaster. That's right, because there is not a woman in the world, including moi, who doesn't some days feel like, oh my gosh, totally going to do it, going to like, you know, manifest this dream, land these numbers, call in this opportunity, make this difference, whatever the thing is I'm so excited about. And then if I'm not really building up my faith muscles, if I let myself fall off the faith wagon even just a little bit, I too can be down in the dumps. I too can be tempted to feel anxious. Or then it just goes into that downward spiral of it works for everyone else, but not me. Or is this ever going to work? Or am I being just ridiculous to think that this dream is ever going to happen? Or why is it so hard? And why can't God just give me a blessing and a bigger one today and in my timing and in the exact form that I want it in? And then there's like the sleepless nights. And then we could talk about, well, when all that stuff doesn't work, reaching for the Chardonnay or the ice cream or snapping at the people that you care the most about. I may or may not be referring to Glenn in this moment. Poor man. He was just sitting in my office and I was like, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm just sitting here with you. I, like He was doing work on his phone. I was like, I, look, what, what are you doing in my space? And all of this to say, we get to be queens. And I don't mean to put any unnecessary pressure, like that we've always got to get it right. But I think it's actually our desire to live in more joy and more peace and in more anticipation of our good more often. So today I'm going to be talking about exactly how that can happen to get ourselves all back on track and in the center and in the zone and in truth, because absolutely it is the truth that sets us all free. All right, so let's say a prayer and then we will 
will be guided into the truth. I got the faith on that one today. Oh, dear God, dear God, thank you for giving us these entrepreneurial dreams. Thank you for making us exactly as we are. Thank you for showing us that with you, all things are possible. And we know that we're taking risks every day. We know that you never promised us the perfect, easiest route where everything gets turned into what we want our magic wand to turn it into. And yet today we turn over any temptation to think in any form of limited or lack. We turn over any temptation to settle, to give up. We turn over all frustrations, anxiety, depression, wondering about any of the doubt or the lack thoughts. And in this moment, we return to placing our focus on you, on our lives, on the good that is within us, on our skills, our talents, and how we are meant to be of great service in the world, and how truly we do have your favor. We thank you for it in advance. We do, in this moment, anticipate amazing opportunities coming our way, people saying yes, clients showing up, money falling into the bank account. And we pray this and we pray it believing. Amen. All right. So I think the thing with the entrepreneurial endeavor is it starts out with this dream. It starts out with this vision. And when you read enough of the books and you go to enough of the seminars, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, this really can happen in its bigness and it doesn't have to take forever. And People who doubt they're the ones that are small thinking and lack. And like, we really do believe that these visions that have been planted in our heart, they're meant for us. And then when we listen to podcasts like this or get around other people who are like totally going for it and they're getting the wins and the breakthrough, you're like, yes, I can do that too. And then you go and you put everything into it and you show up and you work hard and you invest in yourself and you believe in your dream and you you take those risks and you do the things that are uncomfortable and you, you even work through the learning curves and then you get a no and then a door closes and then that window that you thought was going to open is an opening or it's open just a crack and it's easy to get discouraged when we are thinking that we are the ones in charge. And this, I think, is very confusing for spiritual entrepreneurs like ourselves because we're taught so much, well, our thoughts create our reality and that we can make anything happen and we're in charge and taking radical responsibility for our lives. And there is a dance. There is taking radical responsibility for your life. There is showing up and doing all that you are divinely guided to do. And there's a lot of trust that's necessary. And there's a lot of faith that's involved that's necessary. And there's a lot of God's timing that's involved and is necessary. And The problem typically becomes when we think that we know best, when we think that we know what the best outcome would be at the best time in the best way. But the truth is, whatever that financial amount of money that you declared had to come in by a certain amount of time, sometimes, and believe me, I don't love what I'm about to say right now, like we consider ourselves spiritual women. And yet I do find it amazing at what God must do to still get my attention. And sometimes because we're, not that we're being punished, not that there's anything wrong with us, but when we haven't gotten one of the lessons, when we haven't gotten one of the messages, when we start to like think that something should be happening now, and if it's not happening now in the way that we want it to happen, then something is wrong or that God has forgotten about us, or blessed someone else more than us. And none of that could be true. None of it could be true because what I know for sure is that it is all happening for us, not to us. 
And so, yes, we must be willing to show up as queens and not princesses, thinking that it's just going to be a fantasy, that we're going to sprinkle some fairy dust around, and that whatever we desire is magically going to fall into our laps. At the same time, we don't need to be the martyr who says, well, nothing good ever works out for me, and I never get the big break, and none of the clients are ever coming. Those are two bookends that I do can fall into, yes, but do not choose to consciously live between. Because when we bring it back to center, when we bring it back to today, when we bring it back to this moment, what I know for sure is every woman gets her breakthrough when she needs it. I've been doing this work 20 years, and sometimes I see women get it on day one. Sometimes I see them get an orientation on my programs, and the program hasn't even started. Sometimes I see it just when they've signed up for the program because something in them has broken free just by making the decision to make herself and her dream a priority and actually invest in it. Other women, I see them get their breakthrough in month one, month five week 17, whatever it is. And there's a different timing for every woman. But when you are committed to not giving up, when you are committed to not giving up and also not settling, those are the two bookends that you want to live in between. That you are not going to settle for crumbs. You are not going to believe in smallness. You are not going to be complacent with barely enough. And you know that your best days are ahead of you. You know that you are not going to give up. You know that there is a breakthrough, that you are calling it in, that you will see it through to fruition. And it's going to happen because when you connect with God, you and God are a majority. And you will start to see things take place that could not have happened without your spiritual connection. But just like when a seed is planted underground, We don't see all the work that's going on underneath the ground. We don't see how that seed is taking root. And we don't see all the stuff that's happening for that stalk to come up through the soil so that the blossom can take place. And I want you to know today that the seeds that you have planted will come to fruition and the seeds that you are planting. And when you water them, you will see them blossom also. Always in the way that you want? No. Always in the timing than you want? No, because you are not the creator of the universe. And there's more going on. I know that when the times when I get really humbled, usually after the times I've thrown a real tantrum and gotten super frustrated and had my own toddler version of an entrepreneurial meltdown, when I get my attitude adjusted, then I start to see things show up in ways that I didn't even know that I could ask for let alone experience and have manifested in my life. That's when I see things happen so quickly. It's like the thing that we think we've waited so long for can also happen in a holy instant. And so what I have noticed is choosing fear never helps. What I have noticed is having a bad attitude has never assisted. What I have noticed is putting on any cloak of insecurity or doubt or not good enough or whatever it is, also not helpful with manifesting the dream. So when you stay so focused and so rooted in the belief, and that belief is by faith, and faith is the evidence of things not seen. So you got to understand right now, even as you are listening to this podcast, that there are so many forces of good, so many angels, so much of God's hand, organizing, arranging, moving things and people and ideas out of your path so that the right people and ideas and whatever your destiny is meant for will, not can, but will come into your path. And you got to trust. You got to trust. You got to keep calling it in. And I don't want you to do the spiritual bypass. Well, if God wants something good to happen in my life, then God will just send it. No, 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 no. This is a relationship. And so, you know, I, I like to share some personal stuff, you know, in this. I am right on this journey with you. And I prayed at the beginning of this year. I was like, you know, I have this desire 
for my message to be amplified to the masses in a bigger way. And so I prayed and I asked for that. And I said, dear God, you know, please amplify this message. Like there's good stuff coming through here. You have created me for a powerful and important purpose. Like you have created every other human. I was just praying. You've created me for a powerful, important purpose. This, I pray, is my year of exponential amplification. I don't know where those words came from, but they just came when I was in prayer. I was like, okay, that sounds good. And then I didn't let my mind go into the how, but I prayed with certainty that it would be revealed to me. How is that meant to take place? You know, you can like, your mind can sit there and daydream like, oh, is Oprah going to find my book? Or is the Today Show going to call? Like all like the stuff that we can conjure up is where the mind wants to go. But I knew that the level that I was praying for could not happen by my effort alone. I knew that the, whatever this exponential amplification is, like even working 100 hour weeks would not get me there. And so I also have done enough things wrong to know like, oh, I think I know what I'm doing in business. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and go do it. And if, if God is not guiding those steps, it is for naught. Like, I know that the biggest money I've made has been the easiest money I've made. And I know the hardest I have worked has been the, I've worked so, so hard and made the smallest amount of money. So at the beginning of this year, I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. I am asking for my footsteps to be guided. And it just dropped in. And I was like, yes, thank you. And I heard double down on your podcast game. Okay. And so, you know, I've prayed to be led to like the right people and, and who should I be reaching out? Like I got to do my part too. And I could feel myself tempted to, with some of the people I was going to reach out to, tempted to go into being intimidated, tempted to go into, oh, well, they would never have me on their podcast, you know, like tempted to go into somehow that door not opening. But I stayed in prayer because that was my human conditioning that I, I was being shown that I needed to up my confidence in that game. And so I continued to pray, like, you know, that starting to visualize these people saying yes, starting to create within my, my body essence that, of course, they would love to have me on their podcast, that when our messages are absolutely aligned, that there's just going to be a vibrational match. And then I heard... God say it was like weeks, months later, actually, because this is like more recent. Was, um, I heard God say, be bold in your asking. Okay. And I kind of knew what that meant and who I was going to be reaching out to. And I heard something about, I will give you favor. And so for much of the afternoon, even today, I was going and I was doing the research and sending out the DMs and I could feel myself coming up to, and like I could feel the doubt. And I just said, no, 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 no. I'm doing my part and then God's going to do the rest. And this is what I want you to know for your business, whatever stage you're at in it. If you are at a very beginning stage where like you just have the idea of a business and you don't want to go to that job that you are sitting in every day that like isn't your fullest life's mission and you really have a dream of being able to make money doing what you love, but that sounds too good to be true right now. Or for those of you who have taken the plunge and you, you have the corporate job, but you got the side hustle, or maybe you're a little further along down the path and you're like, have this fledgling business that makes a little bit of money one month and no money the next month. And you're kind of like, or, you know, maybe you're just like Ms. Moneybags over there. Wherever you're at on your journey, I want you to know this, that your dreams are meant to come to pass. And when you just take the next step, you don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to put five months worth of work into today. You need to do what you were guided to do. And I remember it was a couple of weeks ago and I was like sitting there spinning about like, how come this exponential amplification isn't happening? Like, how come the, like the bigger numbers aren't coming in? And, and it was like asking all these questions. And I just realized like, maybe because I didn't actually follow the guidance yet. I hadn't reached out to one podcast, but here I am putting all of this effort 
into spinning about how my dream wasn't going to come true. Can we just, queens, can we just stop with the ridiculous of what doesn't even make sense? I prayed. I got my guidance. And if you're like, well, I prayed and I didn't get my guidance yet. Well, you're going to like keep praying to get the guidance. And when you get the guidance, then I highly recommend take the action on it before you go into anxiety. So today took enough focus. It took enough perseverance. It took enough belief in myself and my worth and my mission. It took enough like forward movement, but it wasn't too much. It wasn't excruciating. It wasn't like, I don't know, I'm like kind of excited now, right? And I feel proud of myself that I, I did what I could do. There's a line in the Bible that says, when you've done what you can do to stand, then stand. So if you've been sitting there hemming and hawing about starting a business, stop. Make the decision that you're starting this business or don't, but just make the decision to do it one way or another. I remember when I was going back and forth over my book, fine, I was driving me and Glenn and everyone around me. So Glenn just said, don't write the book then. And like I realized like I had to make the decision. I was going to write the book no matter what. So if you're human mind about this business thing, it's in you for a reason. Make the decision. Take the action. And that action isn't for you to figure out everything by yourself, by the way. Get into mentorship. Get into some experts program where you will be guided every step of the way. Because then you don't have to spin about what are you supposed to do. Like if I wanted to learn how to speak French fluently, I'm not going to sign up for some app and learn a word a day. That's excruciating. And I'm not going to sign up for some free whatever that's going to give me like little crumbs. You're a queen. You don't deserve the crumbs. You deserve the best. So I'm going to go and sign up for, let's say, if I want to learn French fluently, sign up to work with a French tutor or, or a program where I don't have to wonder what I'm supposed to do that week because they gave me the lesson. Then I have to go study it or I get to go study it. And I don't get to get upset with myself that I'm not mastering French in one week or even one month or even three months. Because if you're doing this business, you're you're doing it for the long haul, right? And so we get to move ourselves forward in our life and business every single day. Now, the next thing that will really help is a narrowed focus. This scattered mind that modern day women have, it's not sexy and it's not attractive, and it's not going to help you get to where you want to go. So when you narrow your focus, and one of the books that I love that really helps with this, it's called The One Thing. And I was actually even talking about this with my own team in a team meeting this morning. It's like, you know what? We've gotten a bit scattered, and I want us to really hone our power and our genius. And I want us to get masterful at doing less better. And so we actually took certain things off the plate so that we could completely focus on one program and one program launch right now. And you could just feel sort of like the temptation to think about other stuff, but also the relief on the focus. So like for the women who are in my Gateway to Your Dream Business program, you got one focus this week, and that is the module at hand. And you don't need to focus on anything else. And if you want to go rewatch the videos and and relook at the workbooks and dive in deeper on the great, then do that. But you don't need to be scared because that's all you need to do this week. And when we get really great at the focus and wherever you're at in your business, like focus on what's your one big accomplishment this week. Now for any big accomplishment, there's usually some subcategories, but it's not like that, that snow globe flipped over all upside down and like, your mind just totally scattered. You are a smart, powerful queen that God is wanting to have his words and instincts and vision and clarity and confidence and strength come through you. And for that to happen, we must sit in silence. For that to happen, we must be focused. For that to happen, we must be open to the realm of the unlimited. Because when you're open to that, then you get the very simple guidance or you get that email or direct message that comes in from someone that you didn't even know existed that's going to like open up such a whole new world for you in wherever it is that you're looking to go. 
And you don't need to overly complicate your entrepreneurial path. You just need to do it and then do the next step and the next step. And we're all looking for greater clarity, myself included. We're all looking for greater confidence, myself included. And clarity and confidence come from your relationship with God. And depending on what the piece is, there is a place for expert mentoring. There is a place for following that guidance as well. But what I know for sure is that when you get out of using lack of confidence and lack of clarity as an excuse, then you get to come face to face with truth. And that's what I got today when I was taking this next step. I wasn't like talking about all the people I was going to reach out to or all talking about all the exponential amplification that I desired. It was getting grounded, getting quiet. And then there was even one person that I was going to reach out to because it sort of seemed like a fit. And I, I felt this little twinge in my spirit of like, no. And there's nothing wrong with that human. And there's like, we're all children of God, right? That I was, I was really glad that I didn't just like do what I could do or didn't just go through the motions or just didn't, was whatever. Like the DM was already there and I was just ready to hit send. And then I, I got no. So I, I deleted that and moved on. I have no idea what kind of distraction that could have been or just not the alignment or, or not the right fit for, for that person's podcast. What doesn't matter. What matters is that we're getting really great at listening to our intuition. And that intuition is going to get us out of our comfort zone and it's going to move you forward in the direction of your dreams. And you are going to see the money come in and you are going to see the clients show up and you are going to see the clarity come. And you're going to feel how proud you are of yourself that you didn't let yourself be scattered and that you also didn't let yourself settle for crumbs but that you honed your power, you focused on your desire, and then you moved forward in a certain way in the direction of your dreams. And when you do this every single day, when you wake up and you start with prayer, and it's, dear God, please use me. And then you ask, how would you have me be used today? What actions would you have me take? And then when you go and you take those actions and you pray over them. Every DM I send is a dear God, if this I'm supposed to be on this person's podcast, let them come back with an easy yes. And then you do your part and then you move on and you don't take things personally and you don't get distracted. The other thing that I think that really helps staying on track and focus is really understanding how you do your best work. So I was noticing even as recently as last week, I wasn't being like as productive as I'm used to being. And part of it has been my move to Miami and there's been like furniture ordering and just like stuff that I'm not normally doing. And and I was like adjusting to some time zone stuff and I would find out, doesn't matter. What I came to terms with today is that I need my morning time, my most creative time to be really focused for whatever the creative projects are. Right now for me, it's reaching out uh, for podcast stuff. Sometimes it's writing. Sometimes it might be planning the next launch, but like whatever that is. Then me doing podcasts, interviews, team meetings, other meetings, phone calls, all of that, I needed to stack that at the end of my day because I can do those things really easily and they don't take the same level of effort and focus and creative space. So I think it's also important that you as a woman, that you really prioritize how you do your best work and you got to safeguard it. You know, you got to shut that office door or bedroom door, living room door, wherever your office is right now. And I know it's not easy with kids at home and homeschooling and cabin fever from COVID stuff and all of that. And we are not excuse makers. We're going to rise above and you're going to feel so much better about your day just seeing how you did take that one step to move your business forward. Maybe it was you doing your first Instagram live. Maybe it was you doing your first discovery call. Maybe it was sending out an email, getting out of your comfort zone, asking that person if they wanted to work with you. What Maybe it was working on that sales page or a video, whatever it is. If you've got your focus so clear about the one thing that you are moving towards, and you worked on the next piece towards that, that is enough, queen. 
that is enough. I think the other thing that has women spinning too much is that we're kind of like stuffing mentally too much in a day. I literally, I have those like giant size post-its on my wall. And because I would get overwhelmed if I had to contain in my brain everything that was swirling. And when something comes up that I need to do that's not like the thing I'm doing right now, I go and I write it. Yes, I'm that person. I am not an Excel spreadsheet person. I am a marker, colorful marker and life-size post-it on the wall. And I'll go and put it down. And then as the next thing, I'll write it down there. And so I, I'm aware of it. I'm not in avoidance, but I'm also not distracted by it either. And then sure enough, I start to see myself check off, check off, check off. And so this is what keeps me focused. This is what keeps me motivated also, because when I'm not overburdened and overwhelmed, then I don't go into shutdown. Then I don't start thinking thoughts of lack and can't and and whatever, because when all you're thinking about doing is whatever the next step is for your business dream, then you just focus on that step and it's not overwhelming. No, it's not the end of everything, but hopefully this isn't the end of your life either. We hope, God willing, we have tomorrow and then the next day. And not that we're meant to fritter away these days, but today was only meant to be today. So let's recap here. If you start your day in prayer and filling yourself up with all things goodness, because by the way, that is spiritual nourishment. And just like if you did not fill your body up with physical nourishment and nourishment that's going to fuel your physical body, it's not a good scene. Right. And so when we get hangry physically, think of what it's like spiritually as well. Don't give yourself the chance to get too hungry. Keep nourishing yourself. And you've got to do that spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And ladies, that counts sleep when it comes to the physical also. So spiritually, I am nourishing myself every morning, giving myself such sustenance that it fills me throughout the day, typically. And if that wears off, if that spiritual medicine wears off, then I take another dose. But usually for me, if I get up and I I do my prayers, my meditation, my journaling, my reading, then I go work out, I'm good. And I'm also clear and I'm focused. And I've got my one thing down. I'm not all scattered. And then I go and I take the action step on that. The other thing that I do that I've discussed here is I chunk my time down. You know, on my coaching days, I don't do meetings. I don't do creative brainstorming. I don't do podcast reach outs even. I do coaching. And on the other days I'm doing podcast reach out, I do big chunks of that. And if I'm filming for the Q Club, then it's that. So I find that I work really well when I chunk my time so that I make in that zone and in that mode. And however you find that you work best, introverts are going to work different than extroverts. Extroverts, especially right now, if you find yourself sort of dying on the vine, get yourself into collaboration. Get yourself in a mentoring program. Get yourself with a mastermind partner. Get yourself in connection. I know even if it's on Zoom right now, do what you got to do. But all of us women, we get to be responsible for designing and creating these gorgeous lives that we've been given to show up at our best and then let God do the rest. You have what it takes, queen, and you were not meant for anything other than glorious and spectacular and amazingness because my God doesn't do anything but. And if you've gotten a little bit bored with what's going on, then add the razzle-dazzle and add the sparkle yourself. You know, like what would just give you that spark that would have you be like, hallelujah. I mean, I knew for me, I um, <laughs> I am mild. I don't know when this podcast episode is going to come out. So, but I am mildly, I got to use my languaging right here. I am highly inspired and super grateful that I got turned on to Real Talk Kim. And if you haven't followed her, go follow Real Talk Kim. You're welcome. And she's just, for me, reminds me that I enjoy 
larger than life people. I enjoy Real Talk Kim. I enjoy Freddie Mercury. Like I enjoy the larger than life. It fuels me. It like it reminds me of, of part of what I'm meant for. The J-Lo-ness, the Beyonce-ness. Like I'm here for it. So one day when I was feeling like, I don't know dull is the word, but something along those lines, I was like, God, I could just use a spark in my life. And there I am on Instagram and there's Real Talk Kim on Instagram. And I don't know how many layers of leopard and mint green nails she had going on that day. And I just thought without overthinking, I thought, you know, it would be a real spark to me if she came on the Divine Living Podcast. DM'd her, boom, she writes me back, let's make it happen. So as of the time of this recording, I get to interview Real Talk Kim, larger than life Real Talk Kim. And that's just one of those that might not mean a a whole lot to you, but it did to me. And I just knew that for all of my big desires of exponential amplification, getting connected personally with Real Talk Kim was just, it was one of those, for me, confirmations from God, Gina, keep going, Gina, keep going. And so whatever confirmation you need that would just bring that spark to you today or this week. Ask God to reveal that to you. Because you don't, you're not meant to go about this entrepreneurial journey just like starving to death, waiting for that spark. You can get a little sustenance along the way too. You can get a little razzle-dazzle maybe before the big breakthrough shows up or the big client or the big money or whatever it is you're going for. But what I know is that God is here for you in every single moment and that you are meant for absolute greatness. So don't you forget that. I'm here for you. I love you. If you got something out of this episode today, you know what would mean so much to me? Would you pop on over to iTunes and leave me a review? Because part of, you know, some of these people that I'm reaching out to, they don't know who I am. And the more reviews people see, you know, they're going to see this as a more credible show for them to come on. And it would just mean so much to me if you're inspired by the Divine Living Podcast that you would just go and leave a few, whatever truthful words they are from your heart to me. I do read every single one of them, by the way. So that would mean a whole lot to me. And again, thank you so much for being here. Remember, there is greatness in you. So go bring that forward for the world and for yourself today. Lots of love. Darling, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you're feeling uplifted. And if you are looking for more of the high vibes, if you're trying to like figure out your life and just wondering what is going on with yourself and your career and your next level calling, I have some great news for you. I am hosting an absolutely free five-day virtual retreat. It's called Uncover Your Next Level Calling. I know this is something that I've been in. I know so many other women, friends, colleagues, clients, everyone's just like, what am I doing with my life? And what's this next level, real like deep soul calling about? What's passionate? What's exciting? What's no more boring, same old, same old stuff that's not working, getting rid of all struggle and lack. So if you are up for this mini free virtual retreat, come join me April 12th through 16th. You can sign up at divineliving.com forward slash next level. I'm going to be pouring into you every single day that week. And you are not going to be the same person, the same woman on Monday, April 12th that you are on Friday, April 16th. This is all about helping you get clear and confident and just totally out of the box about what else is actually possible for you. So come join me, divineliving.com forward slash next level. You can share this link in your social, with your friends, anything. This is totally free for global women. I want to see you there, divineliving.com forward slash next level. All right, queen, did you love this episode and know someone who would love it too? I would love for you to leave a review on iTunes and share this podcast over Instagram. Tag me at Gina DeVee. And thank you for Queens supporting Queens and for your continued support. 